I loved when uh, Triple H came out at WrestleMania 30, and it was kind of like Shao Kahn, and it was really cool. And uh, the throne kind of symbolized his uh, reign. And man, I, I want to play ball. Guys, hello. Hey there, how are you? Hey, for, uh, AJ, the first question AJ, there. what's up, baby? Oh, we go high? I'll take it. Hey, you go low. Get first question there? Boom, nail. Dry our way? Got to look at his notes. Professional, got them all down. Who do you want AEW to sign next out of everyone in the world? Hmm. Well, I guess the guy I wanted to sign the most would have been John Moxley. And uh, all of you probably have already received it, but we we did sign John Moxley to a multi-year deal. Um, a really wonderful deal for AEW and our presentation as the alternative. So that's the news tomorrow. And that was the guy uh, I wanted because what a story, you know. On one end, you have this veteran guy like Dean Malenko who left WWE after, you know, over 10 years to come play ball with us. And then you have, you know, Moxley, who was right in the thick of it. I mean, the shield was the hottest thing. I got to be in there with those guys with my brother and my dad. He took the last bionic elbow. So I just got this connection with him, and he has a connection with the fans. And I don't know if you guys saw, but when he was in the ring, he's literally, like, unhinging, you know, and, and, and just coming out of whatever shell had been put over him. So I was just really happy, and I'm not happy he went after Kenny, but I was really happy. So Moxley, which we did. Cool, do you want to ask you about your, obviously, the match with Dustin Kenny, tonight? Kenny, hey, buddy. How you doing? Um, the match with Dustin tonight, I felt this weird sense during the match because it's no secret WWE didn't give you guys the WrestleMania match that you guys wanted to have. And I would argue it was the most emotional match of the night. People were in, kind of in tears about it. It was very real. And the idea that that match wasn't deemed worthy for a pay-per-view is insane. Is there a weird sense of like satisfaction now coming out of it that it, it went as well as you thought it would in your head? So, you know, back when the situation came up where we might have wrestled at WrestleMania, I actually, I, we've talked about this before, I didn't want to do it because I wanted to do the, the ladder match th that Mania and I wanted to move away from Dustin um, because we have a very unique relationship and in such a strange way, it's cathartic what happens, it is real between him and I. It's a different upbringing, a different lifestyle and the prodigal son story is like dead on for who we are, but he's my brother. So I just, I was so happy that he got to be out here because these fans are so different and he got to be there and I wasn't, no, but by no means is he going to retire. He's not, he's not done. And uh, you go from saying, I never want to be in the ring with my brother ever again. to I got to be in there with him one more time. And uh, just um, a really crazy experience out there. Honestly, I, I feel like I'm like still in the ring if that makes any sense, because, and that's why I haven't showered. And that's an old dusty thing, Dave probably knows. When you hit a home run, like, or if you feel like you did, you don't want to go home. You just want to stay out there. But we have time limits and stuff, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So I was real happy. What was going through your head when Dustin brought out that Dusty's favorite shirt? Oh. Go too far. No, no. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's funny because I was clearly his favorite. And well, <laughs> it's well, doc uh, well documented. No, uh, <laughs> It's um, it was it was uh, he always he's a he's a performer always first and foremost and it was something he didn't tell me about and it's okay you know that's the type of risk you take you know and you know, it's it sounds cheesy or whatever but wrestling is um it is art and when it's done right man uh, a performer to be able to perform on a level like that and do little things like that you can't take that away from them you know sometimes it's a miss that wasn't a miss they chanted it tonight. I think Cody, the, uh, the sledgehammer, the chair, a lot of people buzzed about that. Can you walk us through your thought process, the idea behind that, why it was important to do that? Okay, so uh, I had a literal dream about this type of entrance. And I'll be, you know, I, I loved when uh, Triple H came out at WrestleMania 30 and it was kind of like Shao Kahn and it was really cool. And uh, the throne kind of symbolized his uh, reign. And man, I, I want to play ball. I'm not, you know, I'm, I know we don't say competition, but it's pre, it stands for itself, you know? And I also want people to know this role, this executive vice president role, which I love and I, I'm excited about. I want to be a wrestler first. And that's great. We were able to do that tonight. Uh, Tony, Tony Khan set in Gorilla and timed the show. 
that takes years how to learn. I mean, to Gerald Briscoe, they, he was like the only guy who could do it for a long time. Tony did it tonight on his first try. So they don't always need us there in those executive roles. We were able to go out there and, and be wrestlers and that more than anything. Not so much a shot uh, at Triple H, more a shot at I'm not ready to to dive into that role and lean into it. I want to be a wrestler first and foremost. I'm not done. I know that people think um, Kenny's the best and I know that people think Chris is the best and now John Moxley's the best. That's I'm always going to be wondering, oh, well, what can I do? What's the step, you know? Was, was there any sort of a sense of satisfaction at certain points tonight in the sense of I mean you, you you've been getting the reaction for a while but this was still this was still a step up to me even from even from all in in a lot of ways um, I felt more I felt this was more historic than all in in some ways you know just first show and just I mean you know all in was a real emotional match too in a different way but still you know this was more I don't know the whole chanting for your dad and everything like that and people crying at the end you know it was a pretty it's a pretty amazing scene so when it's done right, you know, so you make people mad, you make people happy, and if you can make people cry, I mean, I was crying too, and Dustin was crying. It had to be a step up from all in, though. It had to be. Um, everything has to be a step up. That's why I said to these guys, hey, will you follow us? I mean it. We, this isn't, we put our names on this. I mean, I literally burned the bridge tonight. I can't, I can't go back, and, and I'm fine with that. I, I want us to to play and uh, yeah I'm I thought the whole show needed to be a step up from all in and I'll be like to be more specific Matt and Nick got, they got screwed at all in they weren't able to have the match they wanted to have tonight they were able to show the world their idea of tag team wrestling and it's it's fire and Phoenix and Pentagon it's absolute fire and uh, Kenny and Chris and Chris Chris is just such a legend and you know, I got to design that entrance and I don't know if it came off as I thought it was pretty cool but um, yeah no I'm a uh, it had to be better than All In, and I'll tell you the truth. It has to, next time, we, next time, whether it's Fight for the Fallen or All Out, they have to be better than this. And that's, that's a tough to ask. Oh, we saw a lot of... Uh... I have a real question. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want you to do media because I talked to the chief brand officer, and she said you weren't on the media. I thought I was on the list. <laughs> I, know Mar I know Mark's got something. No one's complaining, I'm sure. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no one's going to argue with this guy. <laughs> Cody, what's going on, man? Uh, there was a lot of symbolism in the show today. And uh, do you feel like that you need to symbolize or just go out there and perform at the highest level that this company can perform at? I think it was important that we we provided a variety. You know, Eric Bischoff, that was something big and it stuck with me. It was like the buffet. This has got to be a wrestling buffet, and that tag team match has to be tag team wrestling at its finest. Kenny and Chris has to be bell to bell, work great, all that at its finest. And then what I do, I like to lean into the emotional character side of this. That's probably my wheelhouse. So I just, I wanted all the symbolism. I, 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 uh, I think it was done, done right, and, uh, and if, you know, I think I know it was done right because the people were so receptive to it. And, that's just the best feeling in the world, you know? Now, had they booted out of the building, we could have worked with that too, but they were receptive to it, so I like the symbolism. I'll stick with the symbolism, and um, I think you're gonna see a lot of great things out of everybody who's on this roster. There's a lot of people. Uh, everyone who's on this roster, but particularly out of the, the guys, the four EVPs, we have a lot of pressure. You know, how will they handle this role? And Brandy uh, talked about diversity in this company. And I saw a lot of diversity in this show. Um, is that something that's intentional, or is it just that you're opening the doors uh, for people of different genders, people of different colors, people of different races, ethnicities? Uh, how, how did you go about making that decision to have it be more diverse? Well, I mean, I'm in an interracial marriage, and uh, I've learned a lot that I would have never known. I one time I told, uh, I told Brandy, I said, I don't have a racist bone. I, don't, I said, I don't see color. And she said, well, then you don't see my experience. And I thought, oh, that's, you're right. I can't just say that. You need to be able to see that experience and uh, at least understand it. And the old territory system of just one, and a lot of folks may remember that, that's, that's out. That's out. The best wrestlers are gonna, they're gonna field, they're gonna field the game. And that's a very diverse, profile and I'm, I'm really proud of it but I know we're not gonna make that we're gonna promote them as wrestlers you know 
uh, that's all the elements of diversity. We're not going to make it a you know a PR element for us, and that I'm really proud of because it's about the wrestling. After, after a, uh, a big moment like this, you you see people in Super Bowls and NBA championships say they're going to Disneyland. What are you going to do? So this is funny, literally. Uh, and Joey Ryan knows this because I put him on the reservation. We're going to Disneyland for to do Galaxy. Get out of here! So literally, <laughs> so literally, I put Joey on the. He doesn't know. But now he does. Uh, yeah, we got to go see. I'm a massive Star Wars fan, so I have to see Galaxy's Edge. I'm gonna wait a while, but I'm excited. Cody, we saw a lot of middle fingers tonight. Obviously, hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Saw a lot of middle fingers tonight. Uh, maybe too many. Obviously, maybe uh, a lot of blood. Obviously, too. Is this a sign of maybe what we'll see to come when you guys are on TV too? Um, I think, you know, and I don't, there's not the standards and practices format we really have at the moment, but I think when you look at TV and you, our pay-per-views will, will take it a step up, if that makes any sense, you know, wrestling and Tony's been really good about this. It's sports centric and, and the other wrestling company, they almost run a TV G show with how protected it is. I get that. He's servicing uh, the, the child audience. But there's a huge part of the audience that still wants sports, still wants violence. You know, in the NBA, guys curse on the court. You move the camera off them. It's not, it's treated as a, it's treated as a live sporting event. And that will help our TV and drive how we want to do TV. But I think at the pay-per-views, you'll see um, a step up. And even Tony, and I'm not trying to spoil it, but we've even talked about, you know, a pay-per-view itself that's another step up. So wrestling is violent. You know, it's part of this uh, combat sports, and we got a lot of great guys uh, with legit background, so I don't mind using that word because everyone here tonight is happy, healthy, brother's okay. Hey, you guys yeah. announced all question. out. You guys announced all out, obviously, yeah. in Chicago. It's the anniversary of All In. Is that going to be your yearly anniversary large show? Moving forward? So I, I think probably look at Double or Nothing and uh, All Out as tent pole events. Um, and there may be another one. Um, we're not going to do a pay-per-view every month. Um, yeah, I realized it was $50 and to ask people to part with their money. Got to make sure it's worth it. Um, so we're going to be, you know, not every show is going to be four to five hours either. You know, TV, I've kind of indicated with you, it's a two-hour TV broadcast. Um, so, so, but All In was where it all started. I mean, our, we have a literal plaque on the side of the building. There's a plaque. I can never get over that. So to be able to go back to that building, these people who I called personally, and then I had to get Gary Jester to call them because they didn't believe it when I said, hey, I would like to run your building and we'll do a good. Now they're excited to have us back. And I, uh, again, Dave's point, we got to keep going. We got to keep stepping up. And I want people to hold us accountable. I wanted to say that in the promo, but that's not the most exciting promo item. I want, I want fans to keep us accountable. The moment something slips or the moment something misses, let us know. Because that's, that's something that's missing. When you're the only game in town, you don't care. We care. So, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, sorry. I got to go. You guys, want, you guys want to do a group hug? Yeah. <laughs>